Thank you all. Thank you for joining us. And um, now uh, we have time for a very short business meeting. Our aim here is to really help to set the stage for the week to come um, and to also talk about uh, what moment we're at in terms of our FDP history. So I'm going to count on Lillian to advance the slides. Um, we're very happy to be ushering in a new group of members, which we'll talk a little bit more about as we go. Um, we thought it would be useful given that we have many um, existing members as well as new members who are going to be joining us uh, for the first time in our FDP meetings to give a little bit of an overview of what the FDP is, a little bit of a sense of the history of the organization, some instruction about how to handle the MOUs to become fully fledged members of the FDP that are now in, in route to new institutions, and to say something about the agenda that we will have in the coming days and weeks and months. So what is the FDP? We are a cooperative initiative that is convened by the Government University Industry Research Roundtable of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. Um, it's, it's often my distinct pleasure to be able to share with the GWIR group what the FDP is doing, and we're very happy to have Susan Sloan as a part of these meetings. She directs the GWIR program. Um, what the FDP does that is very unique is to provide a forum for universities um, and our federal agencies, along with our uh, institutions that may be research in nature, but nonprofit in the way in which they're organized. Um, we work together to improve the quality and the efficacy of the national research enterprise by doing all that we can to bring efficiency and quality to the administration of our federal awards. Uh, we count among our attendees federal agency officials, and we'll be having the federal agency plenary shortly um, later on today along with university administrators, faculty representatives, ERA representatives, and a fair number of guests and friends of the FDP who appreciate the opportunity to join us in our work. If we could go to the next slide, we actually crafted a new mission statement in the not too distant past. Um, we embarked on a research, uh, or I should say a strategic planning um, activity to get ready for phase seven of the FDP. We are officially entering in to phase seven. And in this new phase, we have redefined our mission um, to be that we are an association of federal agencies, academic and nonprofit research institutions, as well as research policy organizations working together to streamline the administration of federally sponsored research and to foster collaboration to enhance the national research enterprise while we maintain standards of stewardship and accountability. And the motto, research is doing science, not administration, stems directly from one of the activities for which we are best known, which is the implementation of the faculty workload survey, where we try to understand what the impact of administration burden is on our ability to conduct research as a national enterprise. We always strive to find solutions to that problem. And so that's how we organize ourselves as, as an entity and in terms of our activities. Now I'm gonna turn this to my co-chair, Richard Seligman, who is gonna talk a little bit about the history of the FDP. Thank you, Michelle. And good morning and good afternoon to all of you who are joining with us today. So um, I was a history major as an undergraduate uh, many, many decades ago. And I'd like to give you a very quick overview of the history of the FDP. If we could have the next slide, please. Many of you know this, but for those of you who don't, I'll, I'll uh, try to give you a little bit of context within which we operate. So if we go all the way back to 1985, that's when the so-called pre-FDP period began with a series of hearings, a report by the Government University Industry Research Roundtable, and a decision on the part of several federal agencies, a, a member of the Senate, and uh, a group of institutions in the state of Florida 
to begin what was then called the Florida Demonstration Project. And that project proved so successful that in 1988, it morphed into what was then the Federal Demonstration Project. And the Federal Demonstration Project was launched in Orlando, Florida in 1988. And we had a pause during the meeting so that we could all go to the windows and watch the launch of a spacecraft. That was a very exciting meeting and I, I will uh, freely admit that I was there not quite as gray as I am today. Then we move to 1996. And at that time we were meeting at the headquarters of the National Academy of Sciences on Constitution Avenue with the statue of Albert Einstein out in front. And during the meeting, uh, one of the federal representatives, Dr. Fred Saulfeld, who at that time was the chief scientist of the Office of Naval Research, stood up and said, you know, this is no longer a project. This is a partnership between the federal agencies universities and fortunately partnership also starts with the P so you don't have to change the initials but you need to change the name of this organization and that's when it occurred and uh, you might wonder well what are these phases and why are they six years in length this was certainly not the result of um, extensive research on the value of six-year intervals but rather it was a decision that was made because the federal agencies who were participating in the FDP wanted to be able to annotate the awards that were being made to FDP member institutions, indicating that that institution is a member of the FDP and therefore encouraged to participate in the various demonstrations that might take place. And it was felt that uh, doing that over a six-year period would be much easier than if it were to change year by year by year. Uh, the next slide, please. So how did we get to phase seven? Well, we started back in 2018 with a series of strategic planning meetings, and we had an external expert on strategic planning who worked with us, worked very hard, I might say, and at the end of the process, we came up with a strategic plan for phase seven. And that plan includes a number of goals and objectives. And I want to just run through them very, very briefly. First, to demonstrate positive impact on administrative efficiency and effectiveness. Second, to institutionalize evaluation to determine the relevance and impact of the FDP. You know, we've had programs over the years of the FDP that we believe are, are and continue to be very successful, but we need to do more to be able to demonstrate with some data that these programs are indeed successful. Strengthen resources and infrastructure to sustain the FDP growth, actively engage community pop partners, and tell a powerful FDP story to internal and external audiences. So uh, toward the end of the year, we issued a series of solicitations inviting organizations that are not currently members of the FDP to join for phase seven. Uh, next slide, please. I realize this is very difficult to read, but this is a list of the applicants for membership in phase seven that have been accepted. And as you can see, even if you might have to squint just a little bit, we are growing from roughly 154 member institutions to 217. And if you look at the mix of this list, over 80% are universities, about 10% are independent research institutions, 
and about 9% are medical and healthcare institutions. Uh, next slide. Michelle. Thank you, Dick. So what I would like to do is spend a little bit of time talking about what comes next as we transition into phase seven and um, focus in on the MOU distribution that has already taken place or is in the process of taking place. For those institutions that Dick just named, which have been identified for admission into the FDP, you should have received an MOU. Um, and that is something that will be the document that officially binds you to the FDP for phase seven. We would like to encourage you to return those MOUs as quickly as you can. And then from there, uh, we will consider you an official member of the FDP. We also um, suggest if you go to the next slide, there's some information about what you can do next um, as a new member to the FDP. We encourage you to identify as quickly as you can your faculty, administrative, and where possible technology representatives. We typically do engage with the ERA or Electronic Research Administration staff in many of the different activities. Um, I, as the chair, and Robert, as the vice chair of the faculty committee, want to welcome the new faculty members. And of course, we count on our administrative representatives to carry forward with our demonstrations. So it's really important that we have everybody appointed as quickly as possible um, as a part of your institution's membership. And for those of you who are continuing members, we urge you to also fill the ranks of your representatives if you have vacancies. Now is a good time to be thinking about who you would like to be sending to the meetings. And because we are virtual, at least at this moment in time, it's easier than ever to actually participate in the meetings. Second, we will be looking for um, people to participate in our demonstrations. One of the things that happened as a part of our strategic planning process, which Dick referenced earlier, is that we expanded what we define as a demonstration to really reflect all of the wonderful work that we do in convening um, ideas and uh, the, the sort of thematic areas of focus, much like we did with um, Dr. Panchanathan today, we really appreciate the opportunity to engage with a wide array of stakeholders to discuss what's going on at FDP. We actually support a number of research activities, including our workload survey, but many others. And of course, the, the heart of the FDP is our traditional demonstrations in which we work on finding solutions in partnership with our federal sponsors um, to be able to solve some of the technical issues associated with the implementation of grants. So now is the time to find individuals who can help us with special skills that they may have in alignment with some of the activities that we have going on at the FDP. And then finally, we are planning to have an orientation for new members this fall. We'll be bringing more information in the coming days and weeks so that you can take advantage of the opportunity to learn even more about the FDP and become a part of our organization. Dick, I turn it back to you. Thank you. Next slide, please. So the word participation has been spoken a few times already and will you'll hear it again uh, many times before our meeting concludes on Friday. And these are a number of ways in which members of the FTP are encouraged to participate. So we, we certainly encourage people to actively participate in the general membership meetings, which are held at least three times a year until recently held in person in Washington, DC, but more recently held online. Uh, there have been some pluses and minuses to this change, but the biggest plus is the ability of more people to attend the meeting and participate in the activities. Second, to participate on committees, subcommittees, or working groups as, as is appropriate, as interests you and your particular institution. To participate in ongoing and new FDP demonstrations. To maintain accurate and current information in the FDP expanded clearinghouse about which many of you already know and which is 
a tool that has been developed by the FTP that allows members to more rapidly perform some of the um, pre-award uh, due diligence in those situations where your institution contemplates issuing a subaward to another uh, FTP institutions. To use the subaward templates whenever possible. And it doesn't say this on the slide, but I would add without mucking around with the wording, use the templates as we have put them together. They evolve over time. And there is an opportunity to add, add anything that you or your institution feel is necessary to add. Add whatever you want to add, but don't change the words. Uh, complete an annual report as requested. Uh, pay the membership dues when you receive an invoice. And lastly, work hard to reduce administrative burden associated with the management of federal research awards. And I'd like to say uh, another word about this last bullet. It was known at the very outset with the Florida demonstration project that not all administrative burden originates in Washington, DC. It was clear then and it is still clear today that we are sometimes our own worst enemies. And what I mean by that is that institutions, particularly of late with a, a very strong fear of getting into trouble, sometimes uh, implement more administrative burdens in order to comply with federal grant regulations than are actually necessary. And so one of the commitments we make when we join the FDP is that we will look at ourselves and as we try to uh, help federal agencies reduce administrative burden, we will do the same for our own institutions. Uh, next slide, please. So on this slide, you can see highlights of the meetings that will take place during the remainder of this week. So this afternoon, the federal agency updates. Tomorrow, the science CV session, the subaward subcommittee, and a topic-based happy hour in the afternoon. On Wednesday, a research.gov session, meeting of the Finance Audit and Costing Policy Committee. The Faculty Committee will meet tomorrow at 3, I'm sorry, Wednesday at 3, and the Conflict of Commitment Working Group will also meet Wednesday afternoon. On Thursday, the Faculty and Administrative Partnership Group, or FACT, will meet, followed by the Expanded Clearinghouse, a faculty happy hour, and on Friday, we will conclude with a meeting of the Contracts and Data Transfer and Use Agreement group. And if uh, you have not signed up for any of these particular meetings that you now want to sign up for, you can do that, but it has to be no later than two hours prior to the start of that particular meeting. Uh, next slide, please. So one of the changes that occurred during uh, this past year, or more accurately, this past year and a half, is the, um, the development of a model of having co-chairs rather than a single chair and a vice chair or associate chair or whatever. And what the, that's a reflection of the fact that the FDP, while it began largely as an organization of research administrators, has evolved over the years to include the participation of faculty members, active PIs on federal grants as an important element in the structure and the operations of the FDP. And so uh, Michelle and I have been working as co-chairs 
And um, I think we've done a pretty good job of trying to transition from the old model to the newer model. One of the things that, uh, that is, is part of the transition is that both co-chairs have three-year terms and subject to good behavior are eligible for a second three-year term. It was important that these terms be staggered so that we don't have both co-chairs uh, turning over at the same time. So in order to do that, Michelle's term as co-chair has been extended by one year, and uh, we have recently elected a new co-chair who will take my place following the end of this meeting. And the new co-chair is Alexandra Albanak, who is a longtime active member of the FDP. She is the Associate Vice Provost for Research Administration at Johns Hopkins University. In the FDP, she chaired and still chairs the Contracts Subcommittee, which deals with some of our favorite topics, beginning with troublesome clauses and with attempts to figure out how to deal with other transaction agreements and how to improve the use of data transfer and use agreements. And she also serves as co-chair of research compliance. I've been in research administration for about 50 years. And early on, when I would look at the NSF reports, which are now called the HERD survey, Higher Education Research and Development, the table that showed uh, the dollar value of federal funds awarded to universities always had Johns Hopkins University listed number one. Year after year after year after year. And I wondered, how is it possible that one university out of hundreds keeps showing up at number one? And at the time I was at UCLA where we were trying harder to move up the ranks, what do we have to do to unseat Johns Hopkins? We finally discovered that we could do nothing to exceed Johns Hopkins because they had locked up the inclusion of their applied physics laboratory in the calculation of their number for the herd survey. So I take my hat off to Alex and Johns Hopkins and have formally given up any attempt to surpass them on the herd survey. Uh, next slide, please. Since this is a virtual meeting, I, I although I would like to hand over the gavel to Alex, I, I don't really, I don't even have a gavel to hand over. But I, I would like to say a couple of things in, in the process of, of turning it over virtually. And although I don't have a gavel, I do have a symbol that I'm going to send to Alex. And this is my cup from the Harry Truman Library with one of his famous sayings, the buck stops here. Harry Truman was one of my very favorite presidents. He was very plain spoken and uh, believed that the buck stopped at his desk and didn't try to pass it on to others. So in the spirit of that, Alex, I send you the buck stops here cup. So I've been involved with the FDP since its very beginning in 1988. I was at UCLA at that time and then more recently at Caltech and both institutions have been active in the FDP throughout its history. I've always believed in the partnership, the partnership that exists between research administrators and their federal agency counterparts, between research administrators and faculty members, principal investigators, 
And over the years, I think the partnership has been effective. Ironically, as hard as we've worked and as effective as we've been, for every step forward, there seems to have been a slight regression backward. So that if you look at the results of the faculty workload survey over the years, the numbers have not been going down. But I would argue that had it not been for the work of the FDP, the numbers would have been going up dramatically. That's a very difficult thing to prove, and perhaps one of you will find a creative way to write a grant application to get some funds to do that study. I, I certainly hope that will happen. So um, in, in turning over the gavel to Alex, I just want to let all of you know that serving in the position as FDP co-chair has been truly one of the highlights of my career as a research administrator. I have many dear friends at universities and within the federal agencies. I hope to be able to continue seeing you in a, a slightly more reserved capacity as the immediate past chair who has trotted out at appropriate settings to prove that there is continuation. And so I ask you, Alex, in taking on this position to keep the partnership alive and strong, and I know you will. So Alex, it's your turn now. Thank you, Dick, I appreciate that. And no pressure there, right? I thought you were gonna roast me, so thank you for not doing that. <laughs> Next time. Right. So I just wanna say welcome to both our continuing and new members. I know even for the new members, many of you have been active through friends and I'd like to welcome you as a full institutional member. Um, I also hope that you're all staying safe and well. Um, I really wish that we were meeting in person. Uh, I think we're fortunate that we have Zoom, um, at least it's not ideal, but at least we can keep our good work going and until we can once meet again, we'll keep on moving FDP forward. I'd, I'd really like to also thank both Dick and Michelle. They've helped me incredibly um, a lot on this transition. They've done an amazing job leading FDP over the past few years, um, particularly with so much planning that was needed to be done before we enter into this new phase. Um, so thank you. I really appreciate it. And I hope I keep the, our agendas moving forward. Uh, as Dick said, I, I've been active with FDP for many years. And it's because I really truly believe in the mission. Um, the close working relationships that we fostered um, provides, it provides us this interactive forum for both federal agencies and university um, institutional officials, both faculty and administrators and our ERA um, folks. So this engagement is like no other and I think it's extremely important. I've admired the previous leaders. Um, I can't say with Dick, sorry, I, I didn't start in the beginning, but I have been there and I've always admired um, starting with Nancy Ray and then Susie Sedwick, Cindy Hope, and now of course Dick Seligman. Um, I think we owe them, all of my predecessors, an enormous amount of gratitude and thank you to each of you. Um, as Dick mentioned, he has not only spent uh, an enormous amount of blood, sweat, and possibly a few tears over the last few um, years helping this next phase, but you know, Dick has, this wasn't the beginning, as he said, he's been here from the beginning, this last stint as a co-chair um, I think has been a culmination of the many years um, of his hard work, um, leading us through the strate strategic plan, working with Michelle to really move us co-chair um, sort of format, which I think is very appropriate, recognizing the equal contributions of both uh, administrators and faculty and moving the um, FDP forward into working with our federal partners. Um, our, Michelle and I are both committed to making sure that we're gonna um, move um, towards more demonstrations. As Michelle mentioned, we've um, looked at what a demonstration might be. And I think with a new virtual environment, while there's um, many drawbacks, um, I've always kind of said that the work at FDP happens in between the meetings. And in this case, with the Zoom and the technologies that we've become much more proficient in, not perfect, um, I think that's gonna enable us to really accelerate some of the initiatives um, that we'll need now more than ever. 
I think the um, the flexibilities through our um, the COVID crisis has um, was a, pro a proof to us that there are things that can be done that will um, enhance and reduce enhance research, reduce burden. Um, while not jeopardizing um, the good stewardship of federal funds. So I'm looking forward to working with that um, to make sure. And I'm very much looking forward to working with both um, our continuing members and our new members to enhance um, participation, expanding volunteerism. I think it's really important that we um, look at um, what is participation and how we can partner with each other to ensure the diversity and inclusiveness, um, both in our leadership and our overall volunteerism. We're going to do that through things like strengthening the tools and the resources on the back end that will enable volunteers to get their work done, to um, grab their vision that they've brought forward, um, to um, help reduce burden and to facilitate our research infrastructure so we can reach our goal of faculty doing research and not administration. So again, I'd like to thank you all. Um, I'm very interested in hearing from everybody. Michelle and I will be back in touch on next steps on how we're going to enhance and um, engage more of our membership in order to reach our goals. So I look forward to working with you. Wonderful. So I'm going to take the last word and move us on to a small break before we go to our federal update. Um, I too want to thank um, Dick for his dedicated service to the FDP. And uh, it looks like we're done. Oh no, sorry. I, I thought that my screen went blank and it was like everybody disappeared. Um, I wanted to thank Dick for his incredible service to the organization. And most importantly, and I think um, I speak um, for many, many people in this forum, um, you know, Dick is an incredibly generous person with his time and mentoring and nurturing of this special class of research professionals, which are the research administration community members. Um, as many of you know, it's a, a never ending sea of things to be done and um, often a very thankless kind of role that we play because we're so dedicated to getting it right in terms of helping um, steward research grants and no one that I can think of does more to encourage people on an individual basis and through his advocacy in this forum and some other organizations he's involved in. So I think we owe him an incredible debt of thanks and I hope that you will take time to send him a message and let him know just how much his effort means to you. Um, but we're not going to let him ride off into the sunset completely. He's going to continue um, to be involved with us even though we know he has aspirations to travel the world in many different ways, so um, we'll look forward to that. And Alex, I can't wait to work with you. Um, it's been great um, to be able to have the opportunity for us to meet as a group, you, me, and Dick, and just kind of think um, and plot, you know, grand things for the FDP. And uh, we hope um, to be able to continue to engage with all of you in person, but in the meantime, we'll make good use of our virtual environment. So with, with that, I want to um, give everybody an opportunity to stretch their legs, go grab a cup of coffee, bring lunch, whatever you need to do so that you can join us again in a few minutes to begin the federal update. <laughs>